everyone, it's Casey. How are you? I am so excited to finally be making a new video and also just very excited to be making um, the, the follow-up video to the Bigger's Dolls. Um, I have come a long way since I made that first video. I have completed the boy. I'm absolutely in love with these dolls. Uh, I can't say that this will be the last Bigger's video because I know I will be making more. But I want to follow up and finish um, showing you the process I did to complete them to construct the body as well as the eye size. Those questions were kind of unanswered in the first video. Um, so I want to show you what I found and what I did in case you want to make your own. So he is on a Blythe size jointed small body. Um, so it's really nice because he can fit all the Blythe clothes out there. The head also is about the same proportions as Blythe. So the same size that of wigs that fit Blythe fit these dolls as well as for the most part hats and um, hair accessories. So that makes them a lot of fun because it's pretty easy to shop for them. If you remember the original bigger doll body was not jointed and also had different proportions than Blythe. So I really wanted them to fit on a Blythe body so that I would have clothing for them. Um, so I'm not gonna take him apart and show the body because what we're gonna do today is finish up the girl. So you saw in the clip previously me painting the dolls. Um, so I'm not gonna go through the painting process. It's basically, I did the same process as I would do with Blythe. So we don't need to go through that. I just wanna show you the eye situation and the body construction. So the reason this video took me a while to make is I was waiting on this wig for her. I really wanted a red head and I'm not quite sure that the styling is gonna be like that in the end, but the wig arrived yesterday and I was playing with it. So where I'm at with her is I need to install and set her eyes and then attach the body. But the first thing is that the back of her head I have taped on and I need to remove the tape so that we can glue that on um, and then get the eyes in. Well, first we gotta get the eyes in and then we gotta glue this on. So these um, dolls will potentially be available. I have a few people already interested in them, which is really cool. So we'll see, but I know I will be making more. I, I really, really like them a lot. Um, I like Blythe dolls, of course, that's my main love. But I think what I like about the Blythe dolls is similar in these. The large eyes, the large head um, is kind of my jam. So, we shall see what the girl is gonna look like. This tape doesn't wanna come off. I had this tape on just to play with the wig. Okay, so let's talk about eyes first. So what I discovered after I made the last video from Googling it as well as a comment someone made is the way that you know the eye size is by measuring actually the um, eye socket, not the actual eyeball, um, which can be kind of hard to do to get your, your measuring tape in there. But estimating, and, and the eyes are in millimeters, so you wanna measure through millimeters. I have people sometimes measure with inches or something and, and it doesn't come out right. So make sure that you're doing millimeters and um, you can see that the eye is about 27 or 28 millimeters, somewhere in there. And I kind of estimated that they were 28, which is quite large. This is the 28 millimeter eye or 27, 28. And so I did a lot of research 
on the internet. I had said in the first video, I wasn't really happy with how large this iris was anyway. I wanted it to be smaller, but the problem is, is the smaller the eye, the less likelihood it will fit um, in the socket and not have gaps. So that's sort of the challenge of changing the size of the eye, making sure that there are no gaps. And for the most part, it's pretty good. I, I mean, it's not exact, but it couldn't probably be much better. So I went everywhere on the internet trying to find the largest eyes that I could. And the largest I could find a variety of, I think I might have found an eye bigger than 26, but they weren't realistic or there was some reason why they weren't what I wanted. The largest eyes I could find were 26 millimeter and they still weren't widely accessible, but I did find quite a few options. Um, so I will link below to the places that I ordered from. I think there was two or three. There was one on Amazon, one on Etsy, and one on the web from a doll shop. So I ordered a ton of eyes because I have a hard time deciding what I'm gonna like once I have the doll painted and the wig. So I ordered a whole bunch. Um, and these ones that come like this actually come apart. So you don't have to use the back if you don't want to. Depends on um, how you're inserting it. It's kind of helpful to have it, but it's not totally necessary. So I got a bunch of different eyes. Of course, with the boy, I decided to do these really sort of dark ones. I generally prefer darker eyes. I know I've mentioned that before, only because they often look more natural. But I knew she was gonna be a redhead, so I ordered a variety of greens and browns. Um, and it turns out that these were my favorite. And so these are the ones I'm going with. And it turns out that they came from the same place. So um, I think it was was a doll online shop. I can't think, remember what the name is. I don't wanna say the wrong name. So I have lots of eyes left over, which is fine because as I said, I plan to do more of these dolls. I just need to get them ordered. But these are the eyes I decided on. So we're gonna go ahead and place them I'm gonna move down a little here. There's a couple ways that you can place the eyes. Most um, BJD dolls, the eyes are inserted and then there is putty put behind them to hold them in and that's how they're left. And that way you can change them. I didn't really wanna do that though because I'm not planning on having people change the eyes out. Um, to me, these are going to be completed dolls as they are. So um, I did decide to glue them in. And I've also mentioned multiple times I'm not a huge fan of glue. However, um, with this type of process, it is helpful to use a tiny, tiny amount of super glue only because it dries really fast and holds them in place. The problem with eyes is um, you sometimes if you, like for this little one, I kind of wanted him to be a little bit side glancing, which can be really hard to match up. It can look right in person while you're looking at it and then you take a photo and it doesn't look right. And it can be really difficult to change them once they're glued, um, which is one of the benefits of using putty. So if you're planning to make one of these dolls, putty is a great way to go if you're nervous about glue. Um, however, with this girl, I'm hoping to do more of a, a forward looking gaze, which can be a little bit more forgiving. But the point is, if you put them in with glue that's going to permanently hold them and they're not perfect, it's really hard to change them. So it can take um, some time to sort of get them in there and look really carefully and make sure it's what you want. So the way that I do it is I start with the first eye, get it where I want it, and then put the next eye in and make sure it's matched. 
So with forward glancing eyes, you don't really want the iris, well, you can do it however you wanna do it, but I personally like to have the iris up just slightly as I think that has a more natural look. So she's going to be looking like that. And so to make sure that you keep it in place, you will want to hold it with one finger and then use a dot of super glue on the inside um, to just hold it into place. So this can take a few minutes to get right. And when you're using super glue, be very, very careful. If you get it down inside the eye at all, it will stain the eye and it will not come off. So you will damage the eyes and you won't be able to use them. So you really just want a tiny dot just to hold it. You can come back and add a different glue that's a little less strong, like E6000 or something like that. Um, I wouldn't smother it in super glue. It's literally just about holding it in place. So you can add a different glue and make sure it doesn't run down inside. And one way to make sure it doesn't run is wherever you put it, then hold it up so that the glue is not running out. It's running down. If it were to run, it would run down inside the doll, not around the eyeball. And because super glue dries really, really fast, you should only have to hold it for a second to know that it's it's going to stay. Ta-da! So we're gonna do the same with the other one, but this is where it's a little more tricky because we have to match them. I would also recommend taking a photo. So once you have it where you want it and you've glued them with one sort of drop of glue, then I would um, take a photo and make sure, I'm gonna turn this eye a little bit and make sure it's how you want it or that it looks right in the photo. Cause even if you've done just a little bit of super glue, you usually can remove it. Um, as long as you haven't got any super glue on the eye. Okay, I'm gonna take a picture really quick, make sure they're what I want before we move on. Okay, so the eyes look good. They're where I want them. Um, I'm hoping, I feel like there might be a little bit of glue residue in there. Hoping that that's not too much um, to be too visible. Um, anyway, so the next thing we need to do and and part of the reason why these dolls make me a little anxious is because once you start doing all the process there's not a lot of going back and starting over um, so the next thing we need to do is attach the body and I don't know if you can see down in there what I ended up doing is taking an original or a um, Blythe jointed body a Blythe size jointed body and then using um, the original neck from the bigger body to sort of attach a metal joint into here and then glue that inside the head. And so the head will turn, which is nice. 
it's not quite as mobile as the original bigger body but it's it's looks much nicer than what I thought it was going to be and I did not have to use any epoxy so let me grab a metal joint we need that to do this construction and I'll show you the entire process so this is the neck joint well I guess it's not really a joint but this is the top of the neck off the bigger body and we're going to install this metal Blythe joint um, through here and then into the Blythe body and then we are going to push this whole thing up inside the bigger head and this part gets glued into the inside of the doll's head um, and then the body is actually attached to the joint which is what helps it move a little so it's been a week or two since I did this process so bear with me if I'm sounding confused because I have to remember exactly what I did um, but first this can be cut a bit we don't need it to be quite so large so let's do that one of my concerns with putting Blythe bodies onto other dolls is that the neck area would look really bad and I actually first of all you can't really see the neck area on this doll which is the point but even when you hold him upside down and you look it, it's very neat um, and doesn't look sloppy so I, I really do like the way it looked so first there's that, then this hole needs to be enlarged so that the Blythe, top of the Blythe body can actually fit on there. So part of that is we need to remove the top of this Blythe body. And then, like I said, we need to enlarge this, which is um, a little bit tricky. I think what I did was actually carve it away with the Dremel, but I think, and I think I'm gonna keep doing it that way. So one of the things to make sure this doesn't look like a sloppy mess is trying to make sure this hole is not um, really bad looking, which is not the easiest because I found that as you sanded it, it got softer and thinner. So we're going to try it. The other thing is, is you don't want to do too much because then the body will not fit snugly in there, but it's a lot more than you think it is. So um, I recommend stopping and just testing where you're at with it. There may be a better way to do this if anyone has a tip, but this is kind of the way I did it. I'm thinking we could try to maybe remove some with a scalpel but you can see it's it's pretty soft but maybe we can remove the majority and come back with a dremel to smooth it out that's the only thing i can think of to make this a little bit faster as you can see it gets really soft on the inside and kind of breaks up a little so just have to be careful because if you ruin this piece you don't really have another one <laughs> unless you have more biggers it's like my 
My Dremel is dying, of course. Although I think we're pretty close. Very close. My Dremel, of course, is dying, so we might not be able to finish this. I could just, it's so close. It might be okay if we put the joint in, so let's give that a try. So the joint is gonna go through here. I did put a paper clip in with the other one. I don't know if it helped very much. Um, to kind of keep it from falling out the body because I did end up gluing it. So I don't think we're gonna do that this time because I don't think we need it. So this is one of the metal joints in my body that I sell for Blythe dolls, but it works really good for this as well. I recently had um, another joint maker's joint in my possession. I'm not gonna share who that was or anything but one of the things I discovered because the the manufacturer that makes the joint for me um, I did not test out multiple companies I got these they worked great I now have them in my shop but a customer sent me one from a different maker look very similar to this and what I discovered is that they are not all made equal and to my happy surprise, the ones that I carry, I liked much better. Mainly because this screw is smaller. So on the ones I tried, this screw was really large. And I discovered that when trying to install it in the body, there wasn't much room for it to accidentally go a different direction. So you wanna make sure that it's going straight down in. If you're turned at all, that screw can come out the neck of your body, which was what I could tell was happening with the doll I was working on. It started to get really white and it looked like the screw was gonna come through and I just could not install that other person's joint. So, um, if you're having problems with neck joints or you are looking for good ones or whatever, I am recommending the ones that I'm carrying for that reason. Um, they are a little tricky to use though so what did I do? I think I went down through the body to do this or the head to do this, but I don't think I have to because see this part will fit in here without needing to go through the head. Just like that. So basically the difficulty with making a new doll like this is when I'm kind of inventing the process that I'm gonna use, it's hard to go back and, and recreate it because I don't remember exactly. I try a lot of things while I'm working on it. So I don't think we need to um, go through the head at all. I'm trying to remember what I did. I don't think I went through the head. And so with these, you just wanna be careful that, again, you're not going out the body, but I have not had that problem with, with these ones. And you can screw it in as far as you can with your hand and then you will need a screwdriver. I don't know if that hole is big enough to, the body should go up inside that round piece, but the hole might not be big enough. As you can see, the body has gone down inside there. It's not 
perfect perfect but it looks pretty good I think I got a little impatient with my Dremel so it's not quite as smooth maybe as that one although I guess it looks pretty much the same so that's it for getting that on there and then you should be able to push it up inside here So the main issue is um, not having that sticking out so that you may have to trim this a little bit more. So there may be lots of other creative ways to do this. Um, but this is kind of what I did. And then you will insert this and glue a little bit of this. I'm trying to just make sure that this joint is on tight enough. There we go. So what I did was I because I don't want this popping up like that. I want it to stay on as tight as possible. So basically what you'll do is you'll push that neck piece up as high as you can and center it and then um, use your super glue again to glue this part in, p in place but you want it to be as centered as possible and then the body will move on its own but it doesn't it doesn't so once you have it, then I just do super glue down in there to hold that piece. And again, as long as you can just get it to stay in place, you can always come back and add more. I wouldn't try to move it around too much um, since it's kind of not wanting to stay very well. So I would put the glue in and then not touch the doll for a few minutes till that sets on that neck piece. Okay, so I'm not gonna pull on it a lot right now because it's still kind of drying. Once it's dry, you should be able to move the head. Um, I still wouldn't jerk on it really hard and it doesn't really move up and down, but left and right um, and a little bit up and down. So that's that part. Once you're done with that, we're going to glue the back of her head on. Again, I am gonna use a little bit of super glue um, just to hold it on so that the wig has a nice round surface to be on. But again, you don't have to do a lot of glue here because you may have to remove it at some point. And um, it's just easier as always without a lot of glue. So we're gonna just put the back of the head on and hold it in place till that dries a minute. And then we have the wig. So this wig, I will put a link to the Etsy shop I bought it from. Um, I've bought her wigs before. I think I've even featured her shop on my channel before. They're really well made. Um, I need to probably just learn how to make them myself um, as I have the supplies to make these kinds of wigs. I just prefer not uh, doing the hassle of it. However, the wig did take about a month to arrive. The, sh the maker is in China and with Chinese shipping right now, it's taking anywhere from two weeks to over a month and that is hard to wait for when you're wanting to finish something. Um, so it's a little bit tighter than I would like, 
although I do like how it stays on really well. So this wig was for Blythe and she, um, well the maker, I don't know if it's a, a he or a she, um, they have two types of Blythe wigs. They have this kind that goes much farther down on the doll's head and then they have another kind that doesn't. And I ended up getting this one because I thought it was probably going to be necessary for this um, doll that it go down a little bit farther. And I'm glad that I did because it fits her perfectly. So we're going to go ahead and put it on. I'm probably, I did glue on the boy's wig um, only because it didn't stay on quite as perfectly. I don't know that I'm going to glue this one on if I do it will just be a little tiny bit um, just to make sure it doesn't come off on anyone but it's pretty tight so I don't think it's going to so I kind of just roll it on and it's definitely a full coverage wig and it's quite wild so I haven't decided how I want to style it. The wig in the photo is styled kind of back like this. I wanted to do pigtails, but I actually think this might be cuter. So I'm not quite sure yet, but that's really it as far as getting the wig on. So let's get her dressed in what she's going to wear. And thinking maybe I'll put a rubber band in her hair just to hold it back from her face. Something like that. Maybe I'll move the camera up a little so you can see more of her. So there she is. Aren't they the cutest? Love them. So her dress is going to be this one. So let's put it on her and we'll get her dressed. And then I'm hoping that in the next couple of days, I'm going to be able to do photos of both of them. I've taken a couple of photos of the boy, but I really want to do some fun outside photos if possible. I'm not sure if I'm going to have time. Um, also, oh, I wanted to mention that you could also add eyelashes to these dolls. I did hold some eyelashes up to the boy and I really didn't like them. I'm not sure how I'd feel with the girl. I'm kind of liking her just like she is. So I don't think I'm going to. And I'm trying to decide if I want to put a shirt under this dress. I don't think I do. I might end up putting a sweater on her. We'll see with her crazy big hair. I don't need, think she needs a lot of clothing. I definitely want to put tights and shoes on her. So let me grab something that will work. And I'm hoping that maybe I can pin this back and put a big bow in her hair. Let's grab some tights and shoes. Okay, I'm gonna put some underwear on her. if I like the socks that I picked because her dress is very um, distressed and vintage looking and these socks might be a little too bright and fresh and new. But they're also kind of hidden and I could tea stain them which I might do. What do you guys think? Do you love them as much as I do? I sure love them. So I think I am going to pin her hair. I like it like this. I'm gonna pin it and find a bow situation for her. So as you can see, um, her head does turn. 
it's might not be quite as tight as the other one it's not a perfect neck but when they're looking upright you can't see it at all so I'm very happy with it it's something I'll probably keep perfecting and we'll see where it takes us um, I also thought she could wear a hat maybe This one would be a little too white. I have a cute bear one similar to the boy. She might be able to wear. So, let's see. We'll see. She's probably gonna end up with a bow with such big hair. So, anyway, I'm gonna play around with them. Hopefully this week I'll have photos, um, and I'm hoping that I'll have them before I post this video so you can see a couple photos. Um, and if they're available, they will be for sale. Otherwise, I'm hoping that even if they get snapped up, I will order some more to work on in the near future. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you liked the biggers. And we'll see you all again really soon. Bye, everyone.